In this recipe, we're turning a simple can of tuna in spring water into a fantastic tuna mornay. This recipe is super easy to make, it's cheap and tastes fantastic, and it's a recipe that one of you guys has suggested I do. So if you wanna see more of that type of content, leave what you wanna see in the comments below, and we'll see if I can get it done. Let's get straight into it. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, starting out, we're gonna open up one can of tuna. This is tuna in spring water and it weighs 425 grams. Just be careful of that lid, it can be quite sharp. Then pour it through a sieve over a bowl to catch that liquid and we can discard the liquid as it's no longer needed. As for the tuna itself, allow this to drain whilst we do everything else and you can also crumble this up, which will make it easier for later on in the recipe. Now the rest of the ingredients are really simple. We're going to need one brown or yellow onion. I've removed the tip, left the root intact and peeled it, saving those scraps for a stock. Slice that onion in half and then make thin slices across, stopping at the root, which will hold it intact. Make a horizontal slice through the center to break up the formation. Rotate it and then just dice into nice fine pieces, making sure that they're the same size and just trim any excess flesh from around the root, saving that root for a stock. The other bit of prep is two cloves of garlic. These can be ran along a fine microplane or box grater to create a paste. And you can also roughly chop them, it's up to you, but the different preparation methods result in different flavors and the paste is the best one for this recipe. With that out of the way, fill a pot with water about three quarters full, then transfer it over to your stovetop, place it over a high heat, generously season with salt, and then allow this to come to a boil. Add in 400 grams of macaroni pasta or shells or a different type of pasta to your liking. Give it a mix to prevent it from clumping. And then we're going to cook this for three minutes less than the packet instructions. With that done, carefully remove it from the stovetop and pour it through a sieve to drain and then just allow this to drain whilst we do everything else. Also, don't get rid of that pot because we're gonna place it back onto the stovetop and use it again. Now to make our Mornay sauce, pour 600 milliliters of full fat milk into a small saucepan. Place it onto a small burner over a medium low heat and just let it heat up slowly in the background. Don't have to touch this, don't have to do anything to it, but just don't let it boil, that's the only rule. Into the pasta pot over a medium high heat, add 100 grams of unsalted butter allowing it to melt and bubble. Then add in the diced onion along with salt to taste. Then we're going to sweat this off for about three minutes, moving it around regularly. Sweating off literally just means cooking without color. The way to do that is just to keep it moving so that it can't brown off. Once achieved, we can then add in the garlic paste, doing the exact same thing, just keep it moving, and we're going to cook this for about 45 seconds just to get that infusion into the butter and the onions. Next to go in is 70 grams of plain all-purpose flour. What we're creating here is called a roux. This is a thickening agent, which is the base to many sauces, especially bechamel, and cook this for two minutes to get the flour taste out, which will create a nice thick paste. Once the milk is warmed through, not too hot, we're going to then ladle in one or two ladles worth at a time and we're going to mix this in completely just until that roux absorbs all of the milk. This will take about 30 seconds, it won't take long at all and you do want to do this over a medium heat now, just lower it a little bit from what it was on before. Don't let this brown off either though because we want to create a blonde roux which is obviously the colour of the milk and the butter but you can create a brown roux by cooking this for longer, but we do not want to do that for this type of recipe. Once the roux has absorbed the milk, we're then going to go in again with one to two ladles worth, just repeating that same process, mixing it around just until it's all absorbed. And when you get to the last amount, just pour it all in. And we're also going to add in 180 milliliters of thickened cream. Don't have to add the cream if you don't want to. If you don't, just add in extra milk, but this will create a really nice, smooth, creamy texture. With that all in, just continue mixing for one to one and a half minutes until everything is absorbed and it's a nice thick but pourable consistency. The lumps are from the onion, it's not the flour. If you do happen to see lumps of flour, just continue mixing it until it smooths out. I then recommend checking it for seasoning and adjusting if necessary with salt and pepper. I don't recommend using cracked black pepper for this just because it will leave clumps in the actual sauce itself. You can also infuse it with a little bit of nutmeg, cinnamon or cloves, it's up to you. But once you're happy with it, just remove it from the stovetop. Now this is completely optional, but I'm adding in the zest from half of a lemon. This is for a beautiful citrus infusion. Don't add any more though, because it will become overpowering. And like I said, it is completely optional. Follow that up with the drained tuna. I have crumpled this in my fingers just to break it down a little bit. It will be a lot easier to eat this way. And then lastly, add in that pasta that we drained off before. And I do recommend just breaking it up a little bit because once you drain the pasta, it can stick together quite a bit. Let's then get in there with a spatula or a wooden spoon and just mix everything until it's all combined and everything is covered in the sauce. Be sure to get to the bottom of the pot as well because some sauce can be hiding, but once you're happy with that, that is then done and ready to go. Grease up a large roasting dish. I'll leave the dimensions for this in the description. You can either use spray oil, butter, or even just olive oil and spread it out with a kitchen cloth. Add in all of that tuna mornay, and then we're gonna layer it out on the top and just make sure it sits flat, completely compressed in the pan. 
Another optional ingredient is some breadcrumbs. I'm using panko breadcrumbs and I'm just sprinkling evenly over the top. It's gonna to create a nice crust or a beautiful texture on the surface. And then to turn this into an actual Mornay instead of it just being bechamel, I'm going to add over some cheddar cheese. The amount is completely up to you on this one. Just make sure you cover the top for that beautiful crust. Then transfer this over to a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for about 25 to 30 minutes or until the surface is completely golden and has a beautiful crust. Then we can remove it from the stovetop and then place it onto a wire rack to allow it to cool down for about 20 minutes just to make that surface crisp up and it will be a lot easier to serve. When you are ready to serve it up, you can either use a knife or use a flat bottom spatula like what I'm using here. Carefully cut around how many portions you want and then carefully scoop it out because this is very delicate on the bottom. Obviously the cheese crust is nice and firm on top, but look how good this looks. I'm super happy with how this came out and I can't wait for you guys to try it, but that is absolutely fantastic and smells amazing too. Serving up, you can do it however you like to. I like to place it onto a plate, drizzle over a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to finish it off, flat leaf parsley as a garnish, and then hit it up with some cracked black pepper. And then the last thing to do is, of course, we can then dig in. I'm so glad that you guys asked me to do this recipe because it is absolutely delicious. It's fresh, it's tangy, it's a little bit rich, and that cheese crust over the top is absolutely perfect. You can do so much more to this as well. You can use more tuna, you can make more Mornay sauce or bechamel and just add that through. Or you can serve more bechamel over the top. It's completely up to you how you want to do it. This recipe can be eaten as a main or as a side and it probably serves about six to eight people depending on portion size. I'll leave all of the details about storage and reheating in the description. But other than that, please do try this recipe. It is absolutely delicious. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button. It really helps me out and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thing is making me sound